Hello everyone. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick patch 13.5 uh, rundown, uh, explain my thoughts on a few different uh, buffs and nerfs, and in general just give my give my take on the patch and uh, tell you guys what to play uh, in solo queue for the next patch and so on. So let's get into it. So as we can see from the highlights, Aurelion, Caitlyn, GP getting nerfed. I think all of these were very prevalent in uh, pro play, or at least getting it. Zaya as well uh, was up there as well. As for the buffs, I think they're just trying to swap up the meta a bit, uh, especially in bot lane. Buffing Samir and Jinx, I think, will make it a bit different, and obviously nerfing Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn is kind of the gatekeeper of a lot of uh, matchups, because if Caitlyn and her range support is strong, it's very hard for all in to play uh, into her, so I think this will be a big one. And then Ash changes as well, they're changing her ult a bit, so that will that'll be nice. Uh, so let's get into it. Champions. Yumi rework, all abilities adjusted. Oh, brilliant. I went through this with Alice as well, um, but in general, they're trying to make her a bit more streamlined and straightforward and not have that high of a, I say it, of a usefulness uh, ceiling. Um, so they're making her passive. Base armor. When Yumi spells and attacks affects different champions, she heals herself and charges a heal for her allies. If she attaches within the next 4 seconds, she brings the heal to her ally as well. While attached, the effect automatically occurs. Basically, you just kind of heal your ally a bit uh, with your passive. Uh, it's not the same uh, mana passive as it was in the previous iteration of Yumi. So, it has uh, 20 to 10 second cooldown levels 1 to 11. And it heals for a pretty decent amount Prowling Projectile, I can basically put this one a bit uh, shorter than what the description says, there's a lot of different changes here. But basically now the first part of your queue um, is still directed, uh, and then the second part of the queue, it, uh, if you're attached, it really speeds up and you, can, you can't uh, target it anymore and you can't uh, control it anymore. So it's kind of like if you want to put it like this, it goes like this, the mouse goes like whoop, and it goes really fast, uh, it's kind of like a like a speeding projectile uh, before it was the same speed all the time but now it's yeah it's a, it's a very the second half of the spell goes mega fast w no longer get uh, stats that's good so you can't sit on the hecarim with 580 and just get mega fed that's really really good i think that's the most underrated change of this entire uh, yumi change uh, the fact that she can't just sit on an op ally anymore and get a bunch of stats and give them a bunch of stats E, zoomies, trading heals for shields. Now shields allies instead of healing. So basically the heal is now on the passive and they gave her E, the zoomies, uh, shield instead. Um, they also get a movement speed bonus uh, if her E is on. Uh, so it doesn't give this fat um, shield and uh, or heal and movement speed anymore. It's kind of like a bit more streamlined. And then also Yumi restores 20 to 36 mana to her anchor, not herself, increasing up to 100% based on her missing mana. This one is a bit interesting because they removed the the mana restoration from old Soraka. Uh, but I guess Yumi gets it back now. So that will be interesting to see how it plays out. And then as for our final chapter. For 3.5 seconds, Yumi fires 5 magical waves that affect enemies and allies. If cast while attached, Yumi can steer the waves to follow her mouse. For ally champions, the waves heal. The heal is increased by 130% on her best friend. All excess healing is converted to a shield lasting 3 seconds after ability ends. For all enemies, the waves deal damage and apply a stacking slow. So basically, what they mirror with the steer uh, mechanic is basically before it would go always in one line, no matter what. Um, but if you're attached to someone and that person only, you can steer which direction it goes. So you can kind of uh, alter the alter the angle on your ulti. Um, but if you jump out, the the steering stops basically. So if you're sitting inside the hecarim and there's a Z uh, going behind your Hecarim. You can kind of turn. It goes a bit slow, but you can still turn eventually. Um, so that's interesting. Otherwise, it's pretty similar. Like now, it just heals your friends as well, uh, your allies. So uh, they're they're kind of making her a bit more like every spell is supposed to help an ally uh, as well. Uh, before the Q was very greedy, right? And now it's still greedy, but it's a bit more like you have a best best friend empowered slow, best friend empowered damage. They're trying to make this like best friend thing really stick with Yumi. So we'll have to see how it plays out. I think she looks really strong just from her stats. Uh, her cooldowns and damage numbers look really good. So we'll have to see. Uh, I think still because of the mechanic of attaching in solo queue, she'll have a low win rate. But maybe someone will pick her up in pro and we'll have to see for real. 
Okay, so Aatrox, W cooldown decreased late, slow now increased rank, art bonus AD increased later. Uh, doesn't really do that much, I think. I think his W is kind of like not an integral part of his kit. His, his Q and base stats are what makes him OP. And the bonus AD is nice, but doesn't do much. Ash, Q mana cost decreased, empower duration increased, W base damage decreased, R cooldown increased early, decreased late. So they're just trying to remove her as a support, uh, basically. They're trying to make her Q be more of the thing with her kit uh, and remove the poke ability of her W and her R. I think this is pretty good changes. Um, why did it also say that R cooldown is decreased late when it goes from 60 to 60? That's very interesting, but... Yeah, they're they're just trying to make her into a better AD carry and worse support. I think these changes are pretty good at uh, at doing this because nerfing the W and the R cooldown is kind of what makes her a really strong support. So that's gonna be interesting. Irelion health growth and armor growth decreased. Q burst proc AP ratio decreased. So it goes from twenty to forty to twenty to forty. Less AP, same star does stacks. Okay. Well, I guess this will just make him scale a bit less. Um, and they also removed the scaling on health and armor. So they're trying to make him a bit less tanky and less bursty. Uh, which I think is good. This champ is really strong scaling. So maybe they will have to eventually give him some early game stats to compensate. But I think this is a ch good change in the right direction. Azir, base stats, passive, Q, W, and E all adjusted. So this was a lot of changes here. Um, I think... Let's just say here they want to weaken his early game and give him some compensation in late game. They kind of want to make him into a late game mage instead of like an early poke person. And they want to bring back Nasher's tooth as well. So basically right now Azir is kind of like, oh guys, what do we pick? Well, Azir wins lane and outscales, so why don't we pick him? Uh, I think they just want to make him more niched in the, in the ranged. So I'm not going to go through all of these changes, but um, they're making his passive a bit uh, different. They're Reducing the duration, but making it a bit better, like stronger. Um, so in general. Azir Sundisk will now apply Azir's spell effects as a single target spell. Okay, interesting. So I guess it works with Nasher's tooth, Nasher's tooth as well. Q is decreased damage, increased AP ratio. So yeah, there. And the mana cost is increased. So they're trying to make the poke Azir a bit worse. W. Slower soldiers. Okay. They grant additional magic damage. And total magic damage is up in late game. Oh, and they removed the three three soldier attack speed, so it's kinda interesting. Um I guess in general they want him to build attack speed, uh, as they said themselves with Nasher's Tooth. They're making him scale harder with AP, but they're removing the the attack speed, so he's kind of forced to go attack speed. Maybe go attack speed boots, maybe go full Nashers now, we'll have to see. Uh, the E is decreased AP ratio, they just remove the damage a bit. I guess just to nerf his full combo damage. But I think these changes are interesting, so they're shifting him more into a late game mage with attack speed instead of like a pokey champ. I think that's good, personally. Caitlyn, base armor decreased, base attack damage decreased. Pretty straightforward, she's just OP. She's just so easy to play. She's very tanky in lane, very annoying to deal with. They're just making her a bit worse. Good. You get more mana back on Fizz W. And his E magic damage is increased. I mean, I think he's already pretty decent. Um, but I think these changes might help him be a bit better in some of the matchups that he's already good in. Um, it's hard for assassins to be played right now in general. I feel like they have to be really strong to be able to be played into all these OP mages and tanks, I feel like. Gangplank, passive damage decreased. E now shows all players how many cakes Gangplank has. That's really, that's a very good change, actually. This is nice, because sometimes you wonder how many cakes he has. And they will just tell you right now, so. <clears throat> I mean, this champ is completely mega OP, uh, Z, Z tier champ, so I think... Nerfing his um, true damage a bit. It's very good. Uh, the, the stem, this just does too much damage. I think this is still a lot of damage. 250 on max rank. But 
a nerf is definitely warranted. And keg recharge rate is down. Uh, so basically, or up, I guess, if you think about it like that. Uh, so in late game, you don't have like a bazillion barrels, so they come back instantly. That's good. Jinx attack speed slow increased, W mana cost decreased, slow increased. Our damage cap to monsters increased. So I think this is the biggest one, because uh, now it will contain smites again. Um, it's a pretty nice quality of life change, and Thresh is already OP, so I'm sure that we'll see people play uh, Thresh Jinx uh, if Aphelios is bound and stuff like this. I think Jinx Thresh will be a very premier combo uh, again, because I think she's already decent, um, and all the slows, especially the the Thresh and Jinx combo with the, the slow stacking and Glacial and now the increased slow on W, I think the, the damage that this combo has is really strong already and will just be better on 13.5. Cannon, Q cooldown decreased, magic damage increased, W range indicator for marked targets added, E damage to minions increased. Just a flat out buff. I mean, I think Cannon is already pretty good. He just struggles playing into tanks, right? So I guess he will still struggle playing into tanks. Uh, but all his other matchups are pretty nice. Like removing one second from his uh, Q early game, the indicator, and then a bit more damage to minions so he can wave clear a bit better. All seem to help him a lot. So just a straight up buff to Cannon. LeBlanc, this is another big one. Q now refunds 100% of mana and 30% of cooldown upon killing a unit. Now deals bonus damage to minions. Our bonus damage to minions is replicated on our Q cast. So basically, they're just giving her a bit better wave clear, giving her a bit more mana back. Because um, she really struggles with wave clear when she doesn't have uh, W, so they're trying to make her be able to farm with uh, QE or QW uh, for like single target as well and give mana back. So I think that makes sense. Uh, I don't think LeBlanc is that good uh, right now. I think it's kind of tricky to pick her. Um, she also struggles heavily into tanks and this doesn't really change that. So it is a bit strange though that they're trying to shift her into getting more wave clear when that was always her biggest weakness, so to say. Base region decreased, attack speed increased, Q cooldown decreased early, mana cost decreased, Q tap window time decreased, E cooldown increased. So they're making his uh, Q a bit uh, better, a bit faster, uh, and they're nerfing his E a bit. I mean, Q is kind of what makes Pantheon, and you always have one E per fight anyways. It's not often that you make use of two seconds cooldown on E being lower, so I think this is just a straight up buff to Pantheon. His Q is what makes his kit, so... You will always have one E per fight no matter what, so pretty good change, I would say. Maybe you can play him support again now. Uh, lower cooldown on Q is really nice, and mana cost as well, because it used to cost a lot of uh, mana, so... And the, the health regen being down is not the end of the world, I would say. Okay, pretty nice, pretty nice. Kiana, Q-based damage increased, E cooldown decreased. Okay, so they just buffed Kiana as well. Her Q gets an extra 20 base damage on max rank, and her E gets uh, 1 second off. Pretty decent. I mean, Kiana's, uh, you can do, what, how many Qs per combo? Like, probably 3 per all-in combo. Uh, so this is gonna be, yeah, like, at least, like, 60 bonus damage per combo. It's pretty good uh, in an all-in situation. Ramus, okay. Back damage growth decreased Q. Yeah, they just nerf him. He's just too strong in solo queue. Won't do anything in pro play, obviously. Rumble. E magic resist. Shred increased. Total shred on two. It's increased. Okay, I mean, this is also pretty good. Um, his MR shred uh, was like one of the most OP things about his kit uh, that was really under spoken about. Him having up to now, if he hits two harpoons, up to 40% magic resist. Shred is absolutely bonkers. Like, I think if you play Rumble into tanks now, if you hit both Harpoons, you will just pop them. So I actually think this change will be pretty big. Uh, we might see Rumble back in the meta against tanks and shred 40% of their MR. More movement speed for Samira. Nice change, won't do that much. Health growth and AD growth increased. Also won't do that much, I think. Uh, he's all, If he snowballs, he snowballs. If not, then yeah, he just he's a scaler regardless. So just helps to scale a bit. They, they nerfed AP Twitch a bit. I kind of like that. Don't like playing against AP Twitch. Um, doesn't do that much for AD Twitch, obviously. 
Zaya E de base damage decreased, cooldown increased. Very nice change. I mean, Zaya is so broken right now. She's my balance solo queue on 13.4, so maybe I won't have to ban her 13.5, even though I don't think this is enough to change it. Like, they remove uh, 5 damage from her E and 1 second cooldown increased, so I don't know. I think she will still be OP. Bonus damage from Ghouls decreased. They just nerfed Yorick because he's OP in solo queue. Won't do anything for pro. Nerfed Zed's uh, MR and decreased his E cooldown by one second. I mean, the E's change is pretty nice because he gets more he gets more energy back when he hits um, Shadow Slash with this uh, clone. Uh, so maybe he'll be a way better scaler, but this makes him get a bit more poked in early game, so it's a trade-off, I guess. Jungle adjustments. Counter jungling. Du -du -du -du. Junglers deal 20% increased damage to their own camps and scuttle all camps. Okay, interesting. So they just do more damage to all camps, so they just want to counter jungle early game. I mean, right now, if you're like invading a Gromp or something as a jungler on first clear, you cannot die to the Gromp. <laughs> so I guess they're just trying to make it like you can invade if you want to. I think that's pretty good. And they changed the gold uh, a bit here. They're just buffing gold. We've drained some from treats. Oh, Monka W. Uh, yeah, they're just buffing gold on all jungle camps because they removed it in preseason uh, with the jungle treat system. So, well, jungle is apparently not broken already, guys. This one is a really good change, though. Jungler lane experience: seventy-five percent of total experience to forty to seventy-five. So this just doesn't. This makes the the junglers that just go three camps and gank bot over and over. Uh, they actually fall behind in experience now. Uh, so this is a very good change. I think this should incentivize farming a bit more in general. So we love to see that. Lens. The cooldown is just increased by 30 seconds early game. I mean, maybe you actually sit on your trinket now instead of going sweeper on support. Um, cooldown being so high. I guess for both junglers and support, there will just be less, less swept wards. Um, so we'll make... Uh, ganks a bit more OP once again, I guess. Um, so another buff to jungle, Pog Champ. Some item changes. They change Cosmic a bit, doesn't give any more health, it gives more damage, pretty nice. Steel Caps now looks for all auto attacks for its damage reduction rather than auto attacks tagged with just auto attack and nothing else. Oh, so I guess it, they're n buffing the most OP uh, shoes already, armor boots. Nerf the Seraphs. Seraphs is OP. Fair. Grasp. Removed. Oh. So you don't heal anymore. Interesting. You just gain more health, but you don't heal. That's a pretty big change. I think this change is also big. 10% of missing health on Triumph to 2.5% of max health, plus 5% of missing health. Um, So... You get slightly more healing when it matters less. Uh, when you're high health and slightly less healing when it matters more low health. So they just make the... Yeah, I mean, basically, they just make it so that if you're fighting and the guy survives on 10% health, he doesn't get a fat heal, you know? Um, so I think this is a good change. Triumph is pretty OP. Uh, that's pretty, pretty much it, guys. Hope that you guys enjoyed uh, the patch rundown. Uh, take care and see you guys in the next stream. I'm going to be streaming LCS uh, in, in one day. Uh, so hope to see you there. Peace.